Okay, let us start by continuing to examine the Tulsa Race Massacre of 1921. Okay, in our previous video, we talked about Dick Rowland and the events that transpired in this elevator in downtown Tulsa in the 19, uh, 1920s, 1921. And here we see his name on the Reconciliation Tower. We see the name Dick Rowland. So on that morning of, or at some point on May 30th, 1921, um, we're not really sure what happened in the elevator. But uh, somehow when the elevator reached the first floor, a clerk heard Paige, the operator, scream, and Dick Rowland ran out the door. The next morning, Rowland was arrested by the Tulsa police and placed in the city jail. And later on the afternoon, the Tulsa Tribune published an article on the front page that stated, Nab Negro for attacking girl in an elevator. About 3 o'clock in the afternoon on May 31st, somebody made a phone call to police commissioner by a guy by the name of J.M. Atkinson, and they called him and told him that um, there was going to be some threats on Roland's life. So the police commissioner contacted the police chief, a guy by the name of John Gustafson, and they decided to move Roland to the county jail on the top floor um, of the Tulsa County Courthouse. Well, as it started going on into the night, there were hundreds of white Tulsans started together outside the courthouse. Then, um, around uh, nine, nine o'clock, a group of armed African American men, and many of whom were World War I veterans, came to the courthouse to offer their assistance to protect Roland. The sheriff declined, and they were uh, told to go back home, and everything was under control. However, um, about 10 o'clock, the number of people from the Greenwood District, which was probably in the neighborhood I've seen in 75, returned to the courthouse and were told to go home. Well, as they were there, there was an argument, and one of the men from the crowd tried to disarm one of the uh, men from Greenwood, and a gunfire started, and both sides started exchanging gunfire. And this is when, as they say, all hell broke loose. In the book, uh, Tulsa 1921 by Randy Crable, on page 44, this statement is given that I think sets um, some historical context to the situation. Mr. Crable states, what black Tulsans thought of as protecting a fellow African American through a display of unity, whites interpreted as an armed uprising. Indeed, any sort of defiance was liable to be construed as an act of rebellion. So as the fighting and violence started to erupt, hundreds of special deputies were deputized and then turned loose upon the streets of Tulsa. Um, these men did not help stem the violence, but they themselves, in many cases, aggravated it and carried out acts of violence and crime themselves. <laughs> I don't remember where I heard this from, but somebody once compared the Tulsa Race Massacre, they called it America's Kristallnacht. Kristallnacht was a famous event in Nazi Germany where Hitler carried out many of his anti-Semitic programs of during a two-day campaign of destroying Jewish synagogues, burning homes, and arresting and killing hundreds of Jews. So could the comparison be made here? You continue watching and you can agree or disagree. The following clip is from a segment from a former eighth grade student um, when he did a history day project about the Tulsa race riot massacre. This is a survivor's remembrances. The first fire broke out about 1 a.m. at the intersection of Archer and Boston. At the same time, a gang of whites began terrorizing the black community, knocking on doors and setting fire to the homes. Thus, little Africa became a raging inferno. While we were under the bed, the men came in 
the men, the torches came in and set our curtains on fire first and then set everything that would burn inside the house and set the house on fire. When they were leaving, one stepped on my finger because I was the last one to get up under the bed. And one stepped on my finger and my sister put her hand over my mouth to keep me from screaming. The majority of the riot took place along the Frisco tracks in the area of First and Archer, the dividing line between black and white Tulsa. During all the rioting, whites were robbing and looting black businesses and homes just before they were burned. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.